Hello everybody, I'm here with a video uh, related to the elastic deformation uh, in axially loaded members. So here I have an example where we have this uh, column made of concrete subjected to a compressive load, as you can see, uh, of 1400 kilonewtons uh, applied right at the top of this uh, column. And this column actually is, uh, as you could see, is tapered uniformly from a 0.5 meter, uh, you know, width at the top to a 1 meter width in the bottom. And the cross section of this guy is, is a square. So if I could show you here. So in other words, anywhere you cut this, so if you look at this, you see square cross section. So this has square cross section. So at the top, uh, it's a, a 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter, right, like that, where the load is applied. And in the bottom is a 1 by 1, okay, like that. Uh, anyways, the objective is to just uh, neglecting the weight of the, the block itself, right, so just concentrating on the, the load of 1,400 kilonewtons applied to the top of this block, find uh, the amount of deformation. How much this guy is going to compress? By the way, uh, the total length of this uh, column is 6 meters, let's say, right? And also we know that the modulus of elasticity of concrete is given to be 24 gigapascal. That is 24 GPA, 24 times 10 to the 9 pascal. So you know that if you had a constant cross-sectional area for a bar under an axial load with a constant cross-sectional area, this is the way you find the uh, elastic deformation within the linear elastic zone. But if you have a changing cross-sectional area here, as you could see, uh, you, you know, linearly changing the cross-sectional area, then you have to basically look at a small section and then integrate it over the length, in this case from zero, 0 to 6 meters. So here the area is the one that is changing. Area is the variable. If I could get an expression for the area... Basically, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I have to just integrate that. Remember, P and E are constant. You can take it out of the integral, right? So you could take P and E out. So basically, you just have dx over A in the uh, uh, inside. Uh, so area has to be determined. And that's very easy, actually, guys. Look, if I could actually erase this. Um, we don't have to look at the depth of this. Um, and let me redraw this for you again, right? We don't even need this part. Sorry, guys. Okay. So the load, remember, is 1,400 kilonewton, right? 1,400 times 10 to power 3. Look, if I uh, drop a, a line here and a line here, right, we know that if we cut this anywhere, say at distance x, right? If I could find this dimension here, then remember the area would be that dimension squared. So for, if I call this, for example, this piece here, we use a different color. And this piece and this piece are the same. The two green are the same. Call it z, for example. I know that the middle piece, this piece here is 0.5. So actually the area would be what? The area would be 0.5 plus 2z squared, because remember, it's the cross section is a square, right? And z is gonna be a function of x. So let me show you how that, that, that's determined. So take one of these triangles, guys. Doesn't matter which one. You can take this triangle, for example. This one, let me put it in yellow color so you see what which triangle I'm talking about. Either the one to the left as I'm taking or the one to the right. Okay? So take a look, guys. Remember, this is 6, right? This is X. 
this is what I called Z, right? And how much is this? This piece here should be 0.25 because we have one minus a half, half divided by two, 0.25 here and 0.25 here. All right, look, we could say X over Z is the same as six over 0.25, basically matching the slope. Then if you solve for z, that becomes 0.25 over 6, which is like 1 over um, 24x. So here area becomes what? 0.5 plus 2 times z becomes 112x squared. So therefore, you just have to look at 1400 kilonewton times 10 to power 3. That's p over e24 giga pascal that's 10 to the 9 right the integral of what dx over the area and this is the area of 0 0.5 plus 112 x so at this point if you want to use your calculator go ahead but actually uh, something integrating something like this is not that difficult i can tell you actually that the outcome of this integral if you do it by substitution method you guys know what substitution method i'm talking about remember you call for example the um the denominator eu and then you need du dx so that becomes 112 dx and then that just use substitution method anyway that comes out to be 12 actually believe it or not and um if you just do the calculation delta then becomes actually 12 goes to 24 twice and then um uh, five zeros get cancelled with five zeros here so you get 10 to the power four then you have seven times 10 to the power four unit should be meters 10 to the negative four rather sorry so that actually becomes 0.7 millimeters so that's how much compression you're going to have due to this compressive load applied to the top of this concrete block all right guys uh, just remember that we did neglect the uh, the weight if the weight is not neglected weight is changing as a function of position also so that will add another uh, variable here which has to be considered but to make the problem simple and easy to uh, solve we just neglected the weight so the only thing that was changing really was the area uh, which i was able to get this expression for all right guys i hope you uh, enjoy these videos uh, as always if you like them uh, please subscribe I will come up with video almost every week. Thanks, thanks again.